Welcome back to a brand new video on the channel guys. So what I have for you guys today, today we are going to be discussing the transfer window in the championship and what we're going to be doing, we're going to be going over each championship club individually and discussing where they need to improve in this transfer window if they are going to have a successful season. So of course I'll be very interested to get some of your guys opinions on this video of first of all what have you made of your club's transfer business so far? Have you been happy or not with it? And also what positions do you think that your club needs to look into strengthening before the transfer window does shut? So of course we're in the middle of the World Cup at the moment but I can't take the action away from the transfer market. So we are going to be discussing in today's video some of the latest deals which have gone through in the championship. And another thing I'd be quite interested to know from you guys is with your current set of players, where do you think you would currently finish in next season's championship? Let me know down below because I feel like at the moment there's a bit of an imbalance between teams who have done their business fairly early on and some teams who haven't signed anyone yet. So how we're going to do this video guys, we're going to be going over each team individually, we'll do it in alphabetical order and discuss where they need to improve in this transfer window if they are going to have a successful season. So without further ado guys, let's go ahead and jump into some of these teams. So starting it out, we of course have Aston Villa. Now Aston Villa find themselves in quite a tricky situation at the moment with the financial implications which are looming over the club of course. They're going to have to be cutting down the wage budget this season so that's really going to be interesting to see what sort of players Aston Villa are actually targeting in this transfer window of course we've already seen their low needs go back to their parent club so that's going to be quite a big loss for them players like Sam Johnson, Josh Onema and especially Robert Snodgrass who had a huge impact on their season last time all have returned and probably won't be coming back as well as that we've also seen John Terry leave so the positions that I think that Aston Villa are going to need to look into a centre back is definitely going to be required especially with James Chester to being heavily linked with the move away from Villa at the moment. If they were to lose the spine of their back line, you know, both John Terry and James Chester, it's going to be an interesting one to see how Steve Bruce goes about this transfer window. As well as that, I also think a creative player will be needed for Aston Villa with Robert Snodgrass, of course, leaving. So on to fill that gap is going to be required and especially as Jack Grealish could be heading towards the exit door, a creative player is just what Villa will need next season. Birmingham are the next side to then go ahead and talk about once again quite an interesting inside Birmingham you always feel like Birmingham have been that side who over the last few years in the championship have been just a drastic underachiever and one position that they need to strengthen in this transfer window if they are going to actually achieve their targets is without a doubt a striker over the past few seasons Birmingham have really lacked in that department last season as well they were the joint lowest scorers in the championship with Burton Albion scoring only 38 goals and when you look at the players who could be providing for the striker they've actually got a decent setup behind them you know if you get players on the wings like Jota and Magoma playing to their full capabilities they just need that striker to go ahead and finish it off of course last season they had Sam Gallagher on loan from Southampton he showed glimpses of being okay but wasn't really the man for them I think that Birmingham in this transfer window need to go out and buy that prolific goal scorer to really go ahead and put them on that next level as well as that a goalkeeper may be required depending on what happens with David Stockdale and whether he stays or goes then we have Blackburn Rovers to go ahead and talk about what I think I'd be interested to know from the general championship fan really is which of the promoted clubs do you see doing the best coming back into the championship of course all the relegated sides from the previous year went ahead and bounced straight back up to the championship but I'd argue that Blackburn probably have a better squad now than they actually had when they were relegated really you know one player I'm really looking forward to seeing for Blackburn Rovers is Bradley Dack in the championship last season in league one he managed to go ahead and score 18 goals and one thing I think that Blackburn could do with strengthening similar to Birmingham as well I think they could do with a striker maybe a bit more pace going forward in that side of course they went ahead and recently gave Danny Graham another contract I think he's a good target man for the championship but not really that prolific striker who I think will really help them establish them as a championship club again Bolton Wanderers are the next side and I think that overall their squad could do with quite a bit coming in actually of course with other sides at the bottom of the championship who finished their last season really looking like they're going to be stepping up a level this season it's important that Bolton don't fall behind in that category. One signing I was quite impressed by with Bolton lately was Oz Tuma coming in from Warsaw. I think that they call him the Turkish Messi or something. I was watching some highlights of him from last season and oh my word, he scored some absolute screamers. So a nice creative player coming into that Bolton side, I think that's going to be important. Some defensive minded players I think could be important for this Bolton side as well but mainly, once again, it's going to be a striker who I think that Bolton really need to look into of course. They lost Gary 
Medin in the January transfer window. Never really replaced him after that. Of course, they lost Aaron Wilberham as well. He was uh, released at the end of the season. So I think that that's definitely a position that Bolton need to look into. Someone with a bit of physicality about him and a good hold-up player. Just what Bolton are in need of. Then next up, we have Brentford to talk about. Now, Brentford are a side who, once again, I'm going to suggest they probably do need to bring in another striker in this transfer window. That's a position I really think that they need to improve. What's also interesting about Brentford is we're seeing quite a few of their big players being linked away from the club at the moment, you know. Both Ryan Woods and Romain Sawyer's both being linked to West Brom at the moment. I think that with this Brentford side has got such a good core of youthful players and I don't think they're that far away from breaking into the top six, but they're really going to have to work hard at keeping these players together without some of the other bigger clubs coming in and poaching them. But I think that a striker will probably be needed for Brentford, of course, Neil Mapay being their main man last season. You get that impression that, you know, they lost Las Vibe in the January transfer window and they are a little bit light in that area. Over the past few years, Brentford have had some terrific strikers at the club. You know, you don't need to look too back too long. They've had the likes of Clayton Donaldson, Andre Gray, Scott Hogan as well. So I think that with the goal scrum midfielders that Brentford have, a hold-up man and someone to play off those midfielders up front will really be important for them. Bristol City never really seem to have a dull transfer market and the position that I think that they'll most be looking into strengthening will be their goalkeeper. It is looking highly likely that Frankie Fielding will be leaving Bristol City in this transfer window and goalkeeper, in my opinion, has probably been the position that Bristol City have needed to improve to go ahead and really make that step up into the top six, which last season they weren't really too far away from. What's interesting about Bristol City is they of course recently acquired Marley Watkins from Norwich. Quite a good sign in my opinion. At Norwich uh, they were never really able to get the best out of him. I don't think he really fit into Daniel Farkas style of play. And the last time he was properly utilised in the championship was probably his last season with Barnsley. And in that season he managed to go ahead and score 10 goals for them. So I think that someone that gives them a bit of a different option for Bristol City. The rest of Bristol City's transfer business will probably depend on what happens with Bobby Reid or not of course, if he does end up leaving, they're going to have to look to replace him and reinvest that money. But the position that they're most going to look into is got to be a goalkeeper. Then coming in next, we have Derby County to go ahead and talk about. Quite a lot of people talking about Derby at the moment, as of course they recently acquired Frank Lampard as their new manager. One thing I'd say about Derby is they're probably in quite a unique position compared to the other championship clubs at the moment. In order to, for Derby to buy players in this transfer window, they're probably going to have to sell some of their assets first to make that sustainable you know Derby are a team who can't be affording to spend above their means at the moment with how much they've spent in previous transfer windows one position I'd suggest that Derby could probably look into strengthening would be a left back I'm not the biggest fan of Craig Forsyth Derby fans let me know down below what you think of that I also think what's going to be important for Derby in this transfer window is that they lower the age of their squad I think that overall Derby had one of the highest average ages of any championship squad last season they got a lot of experience experience in there, but I suggest that they probably could add a bit more flair going forward, a bit more pace to supplement some of their more experienced players. Next up on the list, we then have Hull City, and I can't lie about this, Hull at the moment, not in the best of positions. I don't think any Hull fan would really disagree with that. A lot of players went ahead and left at the end of last season, and Hull have got a lot of gaps to go ahead and plug in this current side if they're going to have a decent season next year. If Hull don't get it right in this transfer window, we really could see them struggle next season, in my opinion. I think that defensively they need a lot of work going into that side with some of the players who have gone ahead and left. They're probably going to need to look into three or four defenders coming in in this transfer window, a couple of midfielders, a winger and a striker and all of that is going to be needed for them to have even a decent season in my opinion. Ipswich Town are the next side to then go ahead and talk about and with Ipswich I get the feeling that there's a lot more optimism around the club now of course with Mick McCarthy leaving and them getting in a new manager in Paul Hurst you just feel like there's a bit more of a buzz around Ipswich. One position that I think that Ipswich will need to strengthen in this transfer window is uh, getting a creative midfielder into that side and perhaps a striker with a bit of pace to go in behind. I think that Garner and Waghorn have a good partnership but just injecting a bit more pace into this side will be needed in my opinion, especially with Selena going back to Man City after his loan and Carriol as well being released. I think that a winger will be important for Ipswich and the striker coming in as well I think will be important. Ipswich overall I think they've got a pretty decent squad to be honest. They've got some good young players coming through. And then Next 
of all to talk about, we of course have Leeds United and around Leeds at the moment it is a very exciting time indeed of course. Recently appointing Marcelo Bielsa as their new manager. I'm looking forward to seeing what Leeds have up their sleeve for this transfer window. A position that they need to look into is of course going to be a striker of course with Lasogas loan running out. At the moment they're being heavily linked with the move for Abel Hernandez. I think that would be the perfect fit for Leeds really. Could you imagine how much damage someone like Abel Hernandez would do with three behind him being Pablo Hernandez, Alioski and Saiz. Seriously Leeds could do fantastic things next season if Bielsa gets this transfer window right. I also think that a centre back is going to be required for Leeds. Possibly a midfielder as well but I think that a centre back and a striker are the two positions which Leeds really need to look into in this window. Next up on the list we then have Middlesbrough. I'd argue that Middlesbrough probably have one of the best squads in the championship overall. I think that Tony Pulis will certainly be looking to target automatic promotion as the aim for Middlesbrough next season. A couple of positions where I do think that they could improve upon really. I think that a winger will be needed. It's looking that increasingly likely that Adama Traore will be leaving Middlesbrough. I think that's more than likely to happen really of course with all the Premier League interests surrounding him at the moment. It's going to be important that they do replace him right because he was really the main reason why they reached the playoffs in the end. I also think that they could do with a creative attacking midfielder as well. If you look at the difference between this Middlesbrough side and the side that Middlesbrough were promoted from the Championship with last time. The difference between those two squads is a player like Gaston Ramirez in my opinion, breaking the lines and being that gap between the strikers and the midfield. Someone with that creativity playing like that, I think Millsborough are lacking last season. I think that if they do fill that position right this season, they could be looking for automatic. Next up we then have Millwall to go ahead and talk about the surprise package from the championship last season without a doubt really. Millwall are a side which I think that they have a couple positions that I think they could do with strengthening if they are going to progress from that amazing season they had last time out. I think that they're going to definitely need to bring in a winger. They were heavily linked with a move back for Ben Marshall who of course they had on loan from Wolves last season. However, Norwich are now very interested in the winger it seems so Millwall may go ahead and miss out on him. I think that a winger is definitely a position that Millwall needs to strengthen. As well as that, I also think they could do with a striker who offers something a little bit different. Of course last season the partnership between Gregory and Morrison was absolutely fantastic but I feel like a striker coming off the bench a bit of an impact player really with a bit of pace going in behind would just give them a different option and be especially effective in some of the away games where they became a bit undone in the end where they were sat very deep and they needed to play on the counter attack as well as that perhaps a goalkeeper to go ahead and contest with Archer as well a few mistakes seem to seep into his game last season I think he needs to be kept on his toes and I think that the introduction of a new goalkeeper will probably do that for Millwall then next up we of course have Norwich City we were just talking about Norwich of course they're now being linked with a move for Ben Marshall from Wolves of course he would look to be a replacement for Josh Murphy who has recently left him I think that would be a good move for Norwich really Ben Marshall last season for Millwall really showing what he was about more than capable of being a great championship winger talking about Norwich though I think that they once again are a side who have a couple positions where I think they need to sharpen up if they are going to have a decent campaign next season I'm still not completely convinced with Daniel Farker however I'll reserve my judgment until probably about halfway through next year and see where Norwich are at but Talking about the positions they need to improve, they're definitely going to need to invest in a striker in this transfer window. Whether Nelson Oliveira will stay or go, that's yet to be seen really, although his attitude towards the end of last season didn't look great really. He didn't always look like he wanted to be there, to be completely honest. As well as that, not a lot of Norwich's transfer business will be based on how much money they get for James Madison if he does end up leaving in the end. I think that that creative midfielder will be a position where Norwich need to improve really. You know, They're losing a massive gap there in James Madison. As well as that, a goalkeeper, that's an interesting position to talk about in terms of Norwich, of course. They've not got Angus Gunn anymore. He's returned to Man City after a fantastic loan spell last season. But I'd be interested to hear from Norwich fans. Would you like to see a new goalkeeper being brought in? Or would you like to see one of the youth players like Remy Matthews promoted to your number one next season? Let me know down below. Next up, we then have Nottingham Forest to go ahead and talk about, without doubt, one of the most exciting championship clubs at this point in time, of course. Recently, they went ahead and brought broke their transfer record with the signing of Jao Carvalho from Benfica for a fee of around about 13 and a half million. So without doubt they're showing ambition. He was of course joined by Diego Goncalves as well, also coming in from Benfica this time on the loan deal. I would still suggest that Nottingham Forest are in need of quite a few positions if they are going to bridge that gap up to the top six. I think that the manager they have at the moment in Karanka, very capable person, but that squad, I still feel like they are probably four or five signings 
strength at least away from a proper challenge at the top six. The positions that I think that they need to look into, a goalkeeper is going to be required of course, whether they go back in for Pantelimon or not, that's yet to be seen. Probably another centre-back they could do with as well, as well as that they definitely are going to need a striker who's going to be their main man going into next season. Recently we've seen them being linked to a move for Peterborough United's Jack Marriott. I think that would be quite a good blend actually. Definitely brings a lot of pace going forward. They could probably do with another option as well, maybe a target man to offer something different as well, but I think that that number one striker is going to be important for Nottingham Forest and probably will determine where they go and finish next season with who they sign as that striker. Next of all, we then have Michael Preston North End and Preston, in fairness, we have been fairly busy in this transfer window so far. I wouldn't suggest that our transfer business has completely blown me away so far, but we've done what we've always done really. Nothing has really surprised me too much with the players who we've got in for in this transfer transfer window. We've mostly been targeting young players from either the lower leagues or the Irish league with our latest signing being Graham Burke from Shamrock Rovers who uh, I'm interested to see where Alex Neal goes ahead and fits Burke into our system really well, whether he plays him as a winger or an attacking midfielder or as a striker himself. I'm interested to see how he'll fit into our system but I think that a couple of positions Preston really need to strengthen in this transfer window. First one going to be a left back I think that with Greg Cunningham leaving of course going to Cardiff. I I'm not going to lie I was pretty good with that to be honest. But we do, of course, have Josh Hill, who is a fantastic up-and-coming left-back, who last season, when Greg Cunningham was out injured, more than filled his role. However, I would suggest that we probably do need another left-back as well. I'd suggest that Kevin O'Connor, in my opinion, probably isn't going to be good enough if we are going to be challenging for the top six. As well as that, I don't see Ben Davis or Tommy Spur being left-backs. I think that they're both much better being centre-backs, so I don't think we should shove them out to that position. So I think that it's going to be important for us to sign a left-back to go ahead and complement Josh Hill. As well as that, we're also going to need to target another striker coming in in this transfer window, of course. With Jordan Hugo leaving in the January transfer window, that did leave us a little bit bare going forward, especially in terms of a target man. Now, we've been linked with a couple of players so far in this transfer window who would fill that position quite well. Cameron Jerome from Derby County being one and Kiefer Moore from Barnsley being another one. Next of all, we then have QPR to go ahead and talk about. QPR are a funny side, really, to go ahead and talk about, of course. With the finances that they they've got available at the club, Steve McLaren isn't going to have the most amount of money to go ahead and spend in this transfer window. I think that this transfer window for QPR will probably determine how they go on and fare this season really. They're definitely going to need to battle to keep hold of the spine of their squad. That midfield trio that they had last season I thought worked excellent together of Josh Gowan, Massimo Luongo and Luke Freeman. If they keep those three together taking in midfield and just get a bit more quality in front of them, I really think they could give it a go next season. As well as that, I think that a couple of centre-backs probably will be required for QPR depending on who goes out as well. And it's going to be very important for QPR to go ahead and keep hold of Alex Smithies, probably one of the most underrated goalkeepers in the championship, can pull out some terrific saves on his day, so I think that uh, they'll need to keep hold of the spine of the team, like I said. A couple centre-backs probably would be required for QPR, a striker, and maybe a couple wingers as well to go ahead and really push them onto that next level. Then we have Reading to talk about. Reading, one of the most bipolar teams in the championship, of course. We saw them one season make the playoff final, and the next season they were battling for relegation, so who knows where they'll go ahead and be next season. But talking about Reading, I think that a defensive midfielder probably will be needed for next season with Reading, as well as that a striker is also probably going to be required. They had John Daddy Bud Vartan being the man leading their line last season. He went ahead and scored seven goals. I think he's a good target man, but not really a natural finisher, which I think that Reading could really do with. And with some of the wingers they've got, you know, when you've got players like Barrow and Luco playing to their full ability, clinical finisher going forward probably would be a good move for Reading. As well as that, a centre-back probably will be required if Liam Mould does go ahead and leave in this transfer window. He's of course been linked to a couple of Premier League clubs at the moment. If they do get the right amount of money for Liam Moore, I think that they could turn this Reading side and reinvest that money into a couple of areas to make them a sustainable club going forward. Next of all, we then have Rotherham United to go ahead and talk about. Now, I've seen a couple of people giving their early championship predictions for this season and pretty much everyone is predicting Rotherham to finish rock bottom of the championship again and I think that there are a couple positions where I think that Rotherham definitely need to strengthen if that's not going to be the case this season of course. Going forward I think that Michael Smith is a fantastic target man however they lack that natural championship goal scorer who's really going to ensure their survival next season so I think that a striker will be a position they need to look into as well as that a couple defenders probably need to come in and a goalkeeper is a necessity. Last season in League One they had Rodak from Fulham on loan. Whether they go back in for him or not it's yet to be seen but a goalkeeper certainly a position they need to strengthen. Probably a poacher around the box and a couple 
couple of defenders. That's what I think they need personally. Then we have Sheffield United. Chris Wilder, I think, from Sheffield United has already come out and said that he doesn't think that this United squad needs that much in the transfer window. Last season, really, they more than exceeded expectations as they were challenging for the top six. I think that one thing that Sheffield United lacked more than anything last season was pace going forward. I think that an injection of a couple of pacey players going forward, either a winger or a striker to go ahead and really stretch the back line next season, could give them a different option. You know, they had the likes of Clayton Donaldson, Billy Sharp and Leon Clark leading the line for them last season. All did terrifically well for them, but you've got to say, you know, they're all really getting on in terms of their age. So I think that a couple of young strikers coming in, possibly a defender or two, and Sheffield United will be set up well for next season. Similar to Sheffield United, actually, Sheffield Wednesday are another championship club who I would suggest are desperately in need of some pace going forward, of course. Last season, it was just a really, it was just a write-off, really, for Sheffield Wednesday with the amount of injuries they had. They had the managerial change in there as well. This transfer window, I'm interested to see what direction Wednesday actually go in. Whether they go ahead and sell some of their big players, it's yet to be seen what will happen with that. But I think that if you get the right team built around Fernando Forestieri, they really could be onto a good one next season. But some pace going forward and some improvements on that defence as well could be needed as well. Then we have the first of the relegated clubs to go ahead and talk about. That is, of course, Stoke City. Now, Stoke at the moment are a side who is showing a ton of ambition with the amount of money that they've intended to spend and, of course, with the signing of Benic Afobi already. I would probably suggest that if they are really serious about bouncing back to the Premier League, probably going to need another striker coming in. I'd be interested to hear from Stoke fans as well. How do you think Berahino will do in the Championship? And would you like to see you give Berahino another chance, really, of course? I think it's been about two years since the striker last scored a goal, but in the Championship, he could be decent. A couple of positions I think that Stoke need to strengthen as well. A couple of wingers are definitely going to need to come in in this transfer window, especially with the likes of Jadon Shaqiri, who are definitely going to be leaving. As well as that, a new goalkeeper will probably be needed for Stoke City with Butland more than certainly going to leave in this transfer window. So, But Stoke at the moment, they're in a good position, I'd suggest. Then we have Swansea City, another of the relegated clubs, of course. Recently, they went ahead and hired Graham Potter as their new manager. I'm quite excited to see how he'll go ahead and fare in the championship. Overall, Swansea, I'd say, probably are one of the favourites for promotion at the moment. That squad they got relegated with has got a whole lot of talent in there. It just depends on who they're going to be looking to sell in this transfer window. I'd suggest that a centre-back is probably going to be needed in this transfer window with Van der Horn and Kyle Bartley both being linked away from the club at the moment. A goalkeeper as well is almost certainly going to need to come in with Fabianski most likely going to be off to West Ham in the Premier League. And a creative winger I think is another position where Swansea could be in need of. I think that their midfield at the moment is looking pretty decent. Then the second to last club to go ahead and talk about we have West Brom, the last of the relegated clubs. Once again a team who a lot of people are predicting to go ahead and bounce straight back to the Premier League. I'm interested to see how Darren Moore will fare with a full season in charge of West Brom. Showed a lot of promise in fairness to him at the end of last season but West Brom I think that they have a couple areas they need to strengthen. At the moment of course Craig Dawson and Jay Rodriguez both being linked with the move to Burnley. So that's going to be an interesting one to see how that transfer develops. I think that the positions that West Brom are going to need to strengthen in this transfer window, a centre-back really is going to be needed depending on what happens with Higazi and Dawson. As well as that, an attacking midfielder I think is a position where West Brom could look to strengthen. Recently they have been linked with the likes of Bobby Reid and Romain Soyuz. And a striker as well is also going to be needed for this West Brom side. As well as a defensive midfielder as well, they have been linked to Ryan Woods of Brentford at the moment. I think that will be a very good move for them. And then last on the list we of course have Wigan Athletic. I think there's two positions which Wigan really need to strengthen in this transfer window if they're going to have a good season back in the championship. A new left back is definitely going to be required with them uh, releasing Reese James at the end of last season as well as that a goalkeeper is also a necessity for Wigan. Last season of course they had Christian Walton on loan from Brighton. He was a terrific keeper for them. He put in a really good performance against Man City in the cup from what I can remember but uh, whether they go back in for him or not it's up to them really. I think at the moment Jamie Jones is their only goalkeeper and you know a lot of Preston fans will know all too much about Jamie Jones really. I don't think he's good enough to be Wigan's number one coming into this season in the championship. So, so a goalkeeper is definitely going to be a position which Wigan needs to target in this transfer window. So guys there you have it. There are all 24 championship clubs and all the positions which I think they need to be looking into strengthening in this transfer window. So do you guys agree with me? Let me know down below. So like I said guys make sure you leave a comment in the comments down below as to what positions you think your club needs to strengthen in this transfer window. As well as that what have you made of your club's transfer business so far? Have you been impressed or have you been slightly underwhelmed? Well, like I said, guys, that will now wrap it up for this video. So if you have enjoyed, make sure you leave a like. It is always
always massively appreciated. As well as that, make sure you subscribe for some regular championship content. But other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.